So welcome, Brandon. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I guess we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. How did you right. land the role of Quintus in The Chosen, and what were you doing prior to being cast in the show? So I was actually uh, recording a, a commercial when I got the audition notice for this. I was doing a, like an eyeglasses commercial with a, 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 the, some friends of mine who were also getting these audition notices. <laughs> and we got the audition notice, and we're like, it's a Faith Forward show. And I sort of thought like, oh boy, this might be one of those kind of like saccharine projects. You know, I, I don't want to sound right. cynical or whatever, but sometimes faith-based stuff can be sort of overly sweet. And I read it, I knew this was not the case, right? So I <laughs> loved the writing. It wasn't that sort of saccharine thing. It had like real fleshed out human beings who had complicated lives and complicated feelings and experienced pain and hope and all of this stuff. The, the writing was just technically good. The, the shapes of the scenes were were so well crafted. Characters wanted things in opposition to each other and they, they had to work out how to get what they wanted. I just thought that's so great. Just the writing is, is, is wonderful. And I thought, yeah, I would like to go for this. I would like to like really go for it. So I showed up to audition and Dallas, the director, who's just an, an incredible colleague and uh, collaborator and, and artistic soul, and he said, I, I think I want to go a slightly different direction with the character. Uh, I think I'd like to, to, I don't know, I just don't want him to be like a cliche, you know? Right. So, so I said, well, okay, what if an, instead of being like some sort of lazy, sadistic Roman, he's just, he's just concerned about doing his job well. What if he's just a really good bureaucrat? And Dallas said, yeah, let's give it a go. So we just got to play with it for the whole audition. Awesome. And you know, who knows if I did good or bad acting the audition. I think both <laughs> of us just had really fun playing and we knew right. that that would work, you know, for the show. And, 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 and that's that. And there, and Quintus is not in the Bible. So you didn't have people who are watching the show didn't have some preconceived notion of, oh, this is what Quintus is like, according to the scripture or whatever. So you I imagine you had a whole playground to play with when developing your character. That's exactly right. I'm really happy that you mentioned that. So, you know, The Chosen is a, is a multi-season television uh, show about uh, Jesus, but it's told from the perspective of the people who knew him, right? And right. these are folks that are mentioned in the Bible. They're mentioned in the sort of scholarship about it, right? All the apostles or the, the folks that they bump into in their travels. And Quintus is not, which means that we got to kind of make him up from scratch, which was also uh, just a delight, you know? And right. we get to continue to do that, you know? So every, every season is an opportunity to kind of, to flesh them out just a little bit more. And uh, it's been, it's been a privilege. Cool. So what's it been like playing Quintus? Uh, lovely. So on set, you know, it's great just because the chosen set is, is wonderful. It's a, a, a bunch of like truly talented people who truly care about the story that we're telling, which means that it's uh, an amazingly supportive workplace you never feel like you're an anonymous cog in a, on a wheel, you know? And so that in itself is wonderful. But the sort of other part of it is, is relating to the people who enjoy the show, the people that it impacts. And it's kind of funny because I play the bad guy and I'm kind of a sarcastic wry guy. I'm Quintus right. in, in The Chosen. And all of my castmates get these sort of interactions where they're like, oh, your character broke my heart. It renewed my inspiration. Uh, I related to this because of, I've, I've experienced this pain before. And when, when fans interact with me, it's like, oh my gosh, I love to hate you. Why I, you know, so, right. and, and at first I thought like, oh, that's different. You know, I'm not, I'm not quite getting the, the real interactions here because they're getting these meaningful, you know, uh, interactions. Then I realized that like, no, that helps lift people up when they can laugh. Like, and it speaks to the sort of emotional breadth of the show that like, yeah, there's meaningful stuff. There's, there's all this sort of drama, there's this import, but there's also just wryness and sarcasm and that, 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 that <laughs> spirit of laughter or whatever uh, contributes to that sort of lifting people up, you know? What type of growth has Quintus experienced over the first two seasons? I think he grows in a number of ways over seasons one and two. And in, in, in both of those seasons, you see his, you might see it as annoyance, his annoyance with the people kind of turn into kind of a, a weird grudging respect. Oh, they, 
like meeting Jesus, for example. Right. He has, he thought that he was going to be one way. He thought he was going to be this wild haired screaming idiot. And he wasn't at all. He's clever. He's sharp. He's funny. He has this amazing reserve of human capital. Like he's kind of makes sense, you know, as a person. Uh, so I think that that, that that is a transformative thing in, in Quintus's character. I think the other thing is Matthew, you know, his relationship with Matthew. I think that's transformative for Quintus. I think he wanted to, to, to be that kind of fatherly figure or a big brother sort of figure. And to, to have that taken away is, uh, is tough. And I think that, that is also like, he sort of realizes that he's not in charge of everything all of the time. And in season three, that gets heightened, right? He can't right. exercise his will unmitigated. There are factors within the Romans. There are factors within the population that won't give him what he wants immediately. And I think that's new for him. What message or messages do you hope viewers will take away from season three? And and even if you want to dive into more of what they might take away from you, you don't have to, I know you can't give give away any, any secrets or plot lines that are integral to the story. Sure. But um, yeah. what you can delve into, um, by all means. You know, season three is is just, it's going to get a little bit darker. This sort of uh, motto of season three is come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest, right? And I think what that means is that there are real consequences for following Jesus now. There are real mm -hmm. consequences. So th that darkness is real, but that hope burns brighter. In that darkness, you can go uh, and find that rest. So overall in season three, I think that that's what I hope that people take away. I think people will take it away. What scene or storyline are you most the, the most excited to see how people will respond to? Um, there, well, there's a, from Quintus's perspective, I'm excited for the audience to meet new characters in the Roman world. I, I'm just really excited for that. No spoilers, but just that. Right, right. Um, and the, I'm excited for some of the more personal journeys among the apostles. I won't say any, anything about that, but there's some dark nights for them that I think I want people to sh share in, not for the darkness, but for the hope that emerges. Quintus is largely seen as a villain, obviously. And there's some, yeah. however, there are some redeeming qualities here and there that we see glimpses of throughout the series, especially in regard to his relationship with Matthew. I was wondering if you could please speak to some of those rare moments where he's not a full-blown bad guy with no redemptive qualities. Yeah. Well, I think that's what makes the show so poignant is that the characters are fleshed out humans. They are complex and they have contradictions. And Quintus is written that way as well. He, for lack of a better term, loves Matthew. He wants to help him, wants to nurture that sort of analytical brain. Quintus sees how how brilliant Matthew is and kind of sees himself in that, which might seem narcissistic, but I, I don't think it's that. I think it's more paternal. I think he wants to nurture a, a resource that he wishes someone nurtured in him. He really does want to protect him and help him and lift him up. And that is not just someone waking up trying to be a jerk that day. That's not just a pure through and through mustache twirling bad guy. That's a human being, you know, who, who wants to help someone else. And I, I think that makes him a little bit more human. I think that's what makes the show poignant is that these are complex people. And ultimately, when you care for someone, that's vulnerability. That is a, someone can use that against you. And if Matthew is his best bud, you know, if someone <laughs> takes that away from him, right, that can mean something, you know. Right. So as much as you can divulge, you've talked a lot about this up, this upcoming season being darker than the past two seasons. In what way, if, if you can divulge, in what way does your character, Quintus, contribute to that darkness? Outside of just being a villain and continuing being a villain. Uh, physically, I put out a lot of candles, which makes things darker. So you'll see what that means once we get there. The, the the honeymoon is the honeymoon is over, right? Jesus can't just walk around. He, he delivers the most famous sermon of, of all time in this season, and that will not go unnoticed by the authorities, which are embodied by me. I am the authorities, the local authorities. That there, there, there will be a reaction, um, and that, that's all I'm going to say. 
But All right. yes, Quintus motivates that reaction. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. What's something that you've learned about your, char your character, Quintus, through your research that viewers would be surprised to know? Or is there anything? Uh, you know, because Quintus is, is not a character in the Bible and he is not in any sort of scholarship about it. He's, a, he's made up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not exactly like I can research and find out about Quintus in particular, but I can find little tiny bits like the name Quintus, the root word is Quint, five, which probably means that he's a fifth son. So oh. uh, he didn't get any of his position by inheriting it. That means that he had to work for it. That would go to other sons first. He's low down on the list and he still achieved a position of power. Now that tells me something about him. That oh. tells me he's ambitious and he's capable. So to me, that's an important bit of information. Right. When you see that throughout the series. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so exactly um, right. you, you, you mentioned the fan reaction saying why I ought to. I was just wondering um, if, if you could delve a little bit more into that and like, ha have you had positive reactions to like and where they're able to separate Brandon Potter from the character Quintus and are appreciative of the job that you do on the show? Of course. Yeah, I was I was having dinner with my parents just the other day and some fans stopped me and they wanted to talk about it. They wanted to talk about the show. And uh, that was a very, they weren't, you know, trying to tell me that they love to hate me or anything like that. They they wanted to talk about the show in general and how uh, they're happy that it's out there, that it meant something to them. An interaction that I had recently, I got a message on Instagram and uh, it was a, a young person, a young woman telling me that, uh, that she was suffering from depression and the the show helped lift her out of it. And one of the things that she kind of mentioned was, was that humor, right? That laughter helped lift her up out of that. And Quintus is such a sarcastic and dry and right person that a lot of times we've laughed at her, you know, in, in his scenes. So that means that it's more than just comic relief, though, why I ought to. That, that means that it actually is contributing to that kind of meaningful impact. And Absolutely. that's been a joy to hear about. 